Let's apply this to face recognition, and it's referred to as using eigenfaces. And it comes from this paper by Matt Turk and uh, Alex Pentland, Sandy Pentland. It's Alex Pentland, but his name is, he goes by Sandy. Uh, they were at the MIT Media Lab at the time. Um, and one of the reasons this paper, besides the fact that it works so well, is just known so well, in my humble opinion, is because of this term eigenfaces and face space. What a great, what a great phrase. In fact, I can show you the eigenfaces. I will in just a minute. All right, so here's what they do. They assume that most face images are going to lie on some low dimensional subspace in the big image space, determined by, I don't know, let's say k eigenvectors, okay, k directions of maximum variance, where k is going to be way smaller than d. So d might be 10,000 or a million, k is going to be like 20 or 200. Both of those numbers are way smaller than 10,000 or a million. So what it does is they use PCA, like I just showed you, to find the vectors, or what are called the eigenfaces, we'll look at them in a minute, U1 through UK, that span that subspace. Okay, so you take all your images, you find your eigenvectors. And now what you're going to do, and this is the really cool part, is you're going to represent your face images in that data set as just the linear combination of those eigenvectors. Or another way of saying it is, I'm just going to have the coefficients of if it's 20, of the 20 eigenvectors, if it's 200, 200 eigenvectors. And I'm going to represent my entire image, all 10,000 numbers, by just the coefficients of these eigenvectors. And I multiply those coefficients times the eigenvectors, sum them up, that would be my new image. All right, so it's a tremendous data reduction. So take you through an example here. So, and some of these images come directly from the old paper, some from some newer work, but makes the same point. So suppose I have some training images, X1 through XM. So here's a picture of faces. Now notice it's just the cropped part of the face. So they're going to try to do recognition just on the cropped part of the face. So the first thing that's kind of cool to look at is this is the mean image, mean face, not the mean face, the mean face, the average face. Now nobody wants to have the average face. Too bad. Whoever that is, he or she has the average face. Why did I say he or she? Well, by definition, it's hard to tell, right? Because it's an average over everybody. There is some interesting work done on showing how average faces appear more beautiful than real faces. Um, this was done a long time ago. It was just a study of the appearance of beauty. Anyway, it was an interesting image processing approach to thinking about could you predict when a face would be deemed beautiful, right? You can imagine, here's a question. Show a picture to a computer, face image, pardon the digression, and say, um, on the average, on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely are people to rate this thing as beautiful, this person as beautiful? And could you do that? I think these days using machine learning might be uh, a different approach, but at the time there was work done on looking at average faces. Sure you wanted to know that. Anyway, oh, and so what do you do with the mean face? Like what you should do with the mean face, you throw it away. Well, what you really do is you subtract it out of your population. Isn't that great? We subtract all the mean faces out of the population. No, we subtract the mean face from all the, and what we have left is our distribution. And then we start computing the eigenvectors, and here they are, okay? So here are some top eigenvectors. And one of the things you'll notice right away, in fact, let's take a look at this first eigenvector, actually the, the second one, is that it's much brighter on one side than the other because some of the variation might just be due to the lighting coming from one side or the other. But later, you have these different eigenvectors which look like these kind of ghostly images, but these are eigenvectors. So they look to you like pictures, and they are, but what they are is they're a 10,000 dimensional vector which is just an image. Remember, I can go between the image space, 10,000, right, and the images. So I'm just showing you these eigenvectors as images. Okay, and if I want to take a dot product of a real picture and these, that's easy. All I do is overlay them and multiply. Or multiply every pixel and sum them up because that's what a dot product is. So when I show this to students, sometimes they don't understand how come the images are eigenvectors, and that's because in image space, that's what it means. A vector is an image.